What is up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Leeds United Grey Mode and today's episode is number 88. We've got the wrap up of the previous season of course. If you haven't watched yesterday's episode go back and check it out. It was the Champions League final and of course you will be seeing at some point the results spoiled. So if you do not want that go back and watch that episode from yesterday. It was a very entertaining one at that and of course you do not want to miss it. It has big implications on the rest of the series. The only trophy we are yet to win is the Champions League. So if you haven't seen it, go back and watch it. So that is, of course, yesterday's episode. So today, we're going to do the end of season roundup. We're going to show you a squad part. As you can see on your screen, we're going to show you the new tables. We're going to show you literally everything we possibly can, including the top scorers, how the players got on, and other stuff like that. Then we'll be moving into the new season. Of course, we'll be going in and seeing what the team is going to look like for the upcoming next season, which will be hopefully, depending on your guys' votes, will maybe our last season here at Leeds. At some point, there will be a squad part. Uh, not squad report, sorry. A straw poll in which you can vote on and uh, decide what we will be in, in fact doing next in terms of career mode. That will come up at some point during this week, maybe into the weekend, and you guys will have your say as to what you want me to do. It may be up on a Wednesday, possibly, which is when this video actually is. So I may actually send it out on Wednesday, and you guys can decide as to what we do in terms of moving on in career mode. If you want me to stay at Leeds, if you want me to stay in the save and uh, move to a different team, or if you want me to start a brand new career mode. So I'll be entirely up to you guys. And we'll sort that bridge once we do, in fact, come to it. But today's episode, like I said, it's going to be an episode of me just showing you around the club, showing you exactly what happened since, of course, that game in the Champions League final and showing you the new series and the players that join us on pre-contracts. And, of course, Anthony Martial, 89 rated, is the top goal scorer at the club in uh, the Premier League. And he did, in, in fact, win the Golden Boot. So we had Anwar El Ghazi win it last year. This year, though, it's the hands of Anthony Martial. And El Ghazi is up there. I think he finished fourth in the Premier League, which isn't too bad. You can see 21 goals. From a possible 28 games in all competitions this season. But, uh, you know, Martial was pretty much just a, an absolute don up there for us. Patrick Rose at 79 overall. Not too bad. Emre Moore as well. 83. But, guys, we have Ian Acho joining. And we also have Romelu Lukaku joining. So... I'm, you know, Emre Moore's probably not going to get much of a look in. So if you get an offer for any of these strikers, like Lloyd Kremi, like Chris Wood, like Emre Moore, I'm probably going to go ahead and accept it. Because we'll have four quality strikers in the form of Anthony Martial, Anwar El Ghazi, Ian Acho, and of course, Romelu Lukaku next season. So I don't particularly think that Emre Moore, Lloyd Kremi, or Chris Wood is even going to get a start in this team, including Patrick Rose, actually. So I'm going to send out Rose on loan and see if we can actually get a loan offer for him. You can see here, this is how we looked in terms of... Every little thing in terms of the tables. And as you can see, if you did, in fact, watch that episode, you will know we took home the Champions League with a 1-0 victory over AS Roma. So I'm very happy to say that we are, in fact, the Champions League winners. We dominated the game throughout, and it was a very, very comfortable win in the end, except I have to say I didn't think I was going to be able to score, but we did in the end. And as you can see there, the Premier League top goal scorers was actually Anthony Martial. And well, Gazi did, in fact, come fourth. Barkley was up there for assists, but finished third place. It was actually Markovic who got the highest assist in the Premier League. In terms of clean sheets, Leno is the uh, leading clean sheet holder, along with Lou actually coming in third place of 11 there. So we actually kept 24 clean sheets between the go two goalkeepers this year, and that's incredible to see. So again, fantastic defending from ourselves throughout the entirety of this season has allowed us to have that many clean sheets. Now we're into the new season, guys. And of course, the rest of the players have in fact joined up, but we're going to be using Lou and Reese Oxford in the... Um, the training system just for now until I decide what I'm going to do in uh, terms of some of the other players. Oxford, guys, played exceptionally well in that CDM role when we did, in fact, play it in the Champions League final. But there's one signing I want to make in this episode, which means Reese Oxford may not be getting a heads up in terms of that one. You can see I'm going to show you now the players that have, in fact, joined us here at Leeds. Rudiger being one of them. There you can see his stats and he's worth 14 million. The other side of that we have, I think it is uh, two centre or central-ish midfielders. In the form of James Rodriguez at 91 overall. That's mental. 91 rated already coming into the team. Actually, it's not another centre midfield. It's two strikers, I meant to say. Ian Acho, 85 overall. Not too bad as well. Very, very quick. Good finishing as well from him. But the main man there, Romelu Lukaku with that 99 strength. Absolutely crazy. But I have to say, I've used him a couple of times so far in this career mode in uh, episodes that I've already pre-recorded. And his strength doesn't really show for me. We get an offer here for Manchester United to take off Emre Chan over to Old Trafford there to play his football and with the addition of one man that I'm trying to sign, it was quite clear that Emre Jam just wasn't going to get a look in this season. And for £40 million, that's an incredible offer. But I counter-offered and said, if you give us 61, you can take him off our hands, just as I did with Martin Zindi there. And you can see that Manchester United wouldn't actually match the 61, but they were willing to participate and offer 60.5. So that's actually an extremely good offer. I instantly accepted it. And for someone that we got on a pre-contract to get £60 million for a midfielder of Emre Jam's quality, in my opinion, no disrespect to Jan, I think he's been extremely good for us. But in my opinion, £60 million is not worth it. And I'll take that every single day of the week. And I'm very happy to get off like that. You can see Emery Moore as well. £30 million from Hoffenheim. I can't offer it and said 45 But I think in the end, we get an offer of somewhere in the region of £40 million. And I did, it, in fact, accept it. You can see that they came back and said 
They weren't prepared to pay it, they only wanted to pay the 31, but I think I can't offer to 40.5 40, 40 million, and they end up accepting that somewhere down the line. So you can see, never going to let go of Amuel Ghazi. He's going to remain at the uh, club until the series ends from an offer from Real Madrid. I declined it instantly, and that was just not happening. So the main man that I wanted to sign for this episode, though, was N'Golo Kante. Of course, we all know about him from his Leicester day and his heroics when Leicester won the league title at 5,000 to 1 odds. He hopefully is going to come over to Ellen Road. And I have to say, Kante is the best midfielder in this game I have used, hands down. He's just so good at breaking up play and he just runs constantly for 90 minutes. He's absolutely incredible. There is the match deal there for Emre Moore. 40.5 million was in fact accepted by Hoffenheim and they are prepared to pay that much for him. Kante here, Chelsea came back and they said that they were not prepared to let him go, but we offered them 25 million. And I was actually extremely surprised at that one because... They came back and said yes to that, which is extremely weird, considering they said they weren't intent, they weren't, you know, intending to let him come to Ellen Road, but then to accept a 25 million pounds. I know he's 29 years old, but for me, he could still play at the highest level for at least another three or four seasons. That's just mental to see. So I was very happy when they do, in fact, accept that 25 million pound offer that you see on your screen right now. So we're going to offer him a contract. We have the final of the preseason tour still to come here in the. Uh, well, in the only game of the episode, actually. But unfortunately, Kante doesn't actually come over to Ellen Road to play his football here in time, which means we will have to start that game with Reese Oxford at Holden Field. But to be honest with you, Reese Oxford is not anything to shake your head at. I'll still keep Oxford at the team and he'll still be a backup for Kante and possibly play in the Cops and stuff like that. That was a team I went into with this one just to see how we would play with the new additions to the squad. So I think I went back to a 4-3-2-1 uh, for this. But the, it just didn't work for me, and I think I'm going to stay with the 4-1-2-1-2 wide, which of course has worked wonders for us here in this Grimo, because at 4 3 2 one it was sort of working at the beginning, but it isn't working now, and I can't really grasp it. I do play on all my team, of course, and I can't particularly grasp right now the 4 3 2 one just yet. So at some point, I will have to sort of think about my overall formation, and at the minute, I'm going to keep it at 4 one 2 one 2 Of course, here, yeah, I think I switched to it halfway through this game, because it just simply was not working, but... We, can, we do have the option to us, you know, we can switch up formation quite a few times now with the fact that we've got a number of quality players at the club. James Rodriguez starts, I think, with, uh, was it Ericsson, I think, played on the other side of that. And, of course, Oxford in the CDM role. But we had Ian Acho, I think it was Ian Acho, uh, Lukaku and Anthony Marshall as a front three. So that's a dangerous front three, you know. And we've still got Anwar on the bench. We've still got him to come off the bench, which is just mental. We have some of the greatest attackers possible in the world right now. And this is why I sort of want to move and try something else out in Cremo because, you know... This Legion United team is extremely good. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I have, you know, you've got to look at it and say, is it going to be too easy if we stay here? And, you know, are we just going to continue winning games like this? Because at the end of the day, this team is, I think, the best that we're possibly going to get here. Unless, of course, we start getting new additions like Messi, Ronaldo, all these other players. But I don't want to stay here and just dominate. I don't want it to be a boring series where I'm just smashing every team and stuff. But that you can see, I mean, we comfortably controlled the game here against Roma, much like we did in that Champions League final. And this is with an even better team now. So the problem here is, although I could stay here and continue this on, I will either be looking to try and move clubs in the same save, if you guys suggest that in the vote that you get given, or look to start a brand new career mode completely. Because this team at Leeds, I think I'll sort of get bored after the first year of me just dominating the football. Of course, it could go differently. Other teams could end up getting more competitive, and it could be a bit of an interesting one. But I'm highly doubting the fact that that is going to happen as Lukaku does, in fact, get his first goal here for the club. Fantastic right-footed finish. Not known, of course, for his weaker foot ability. But he has that in his locker. He's got the heading ability, he's got both feet ability, and he's just an absolute quality attacker. So at the end of the day, this Leeds United team is probably going to be the most effective and most dominant side that we've got in the entire series. It's going to be probably one of the most easiest games or one of the most easiest seasons we're going to have in the Premier League. And I think we're probably going to walk it again, much like we did last season. So uh, this is going to be, of course, the last year of career mode. You will have the option to vote in terms of what you want me to do next. So look out for that video. And, uh, of course, give your opinion on what you think I should do. Leave a comment on this one as well. Let me know what you think is coming. I think the uh, fourth option I'm going to give you guys is, of course, continue on and stay here at Leeds. Uh, stay in the same save, but then join a new new club at the end of the season. We can then have possibly a road to glory career mode, or we can join and uh, start a new career mode, of course, with a team that isn't in England. So those are going to probably be the options when it comes round. Make sure you're on the lookout for that video. Make sure you give your opinion, as of course it is extremely important because I really I listen to everything that you guys say. And you guys as decide as much as I do. And uh, at the end of the day, if I make a career mode and you guys haven't had an input in it, you're probably not going to enjoy it. So I'd rather have the most input you guys can give, and me act on that input, and then that way everyone's happy. So yeah, look out for that video. It will hopefully be coming out. If it's not already out after this video, it will definitely be out from tomorrow, hopefully, or maybe even the day after that. It depends on when I get around to doing it. Other than that, that's going to wrap up this episode of the new season of Career Mode, of course. If you are enjoying, again, smash that like button. Thank you all so much for the support you're showing on my channel and on the series. And I'll catch you all in the next episode very soon. Adios!